Ah, Lightfall. We were on the verge of greatness. We were this close. Right when Destiny 2 needed it the most, the narrative not only dropped the ball hard, but it scored into our own hoop. Today, we are focused on the campaign's narrative alone, since I think we can all probably agree that the gameplay and quality of life changes are pretty solid. Great, actually. Hey, that's pretty good. Today, I've decided to take my many years of creative writing experience and put them to the ultimate test. Today, my friends, I will be addressing and fixing Lightfall's worst narrative writing sins, and I will try my absolute best to fix them. The Drinker Fixes. The rules of this challenge are simple. I must work with the same exact material we were given, rather than a complete story overhaul, which in all honesty is probably what this campaign needs, but that's too easy. Anyone can do that. No, today my friends, I will prove to you guys that despite the extremely poor delivery all around, the character's plot and setting could have delivered a phenomenal cinematic story regardless that we were all anticipating and looking forward to, based on the advertising. No, today I will challenge myself to do exactly that. With the same exact characters, plot, the same setting, same destination, same strand subclass, Today, I will provide for you guys a campaign narrative for Lightfall that does not feel like a filler episode, but will hopefully feel like an actual, genuine, and properly made pre-finale story. Fine. I'll do it myself. So, grab your popcorn, set this to play while you're at your jobs or on your commutes to wherever you are headed. Timestamps are provided below for you to skip and return to at your best convenience. If you'd like to see a specific subject and see how I would fix it, go right ahead. Without further ado, welcome everyone to Exula Fixes Lightfall's Narrative, inspired by the Drinker Fixes. Yeah! We begin the same way Lightfall does. You conclude Zavala's narration recap of events, and following a black screen, the battle for the Traveler begins. There are too many of them! They're everywhere! They're everywhere. They're everywhere. The scene progresses at first like the original, because in all honesty, it's really good. Now here's where change number one occurs. The ray of light hits the pyramid ship right here to the left, and that ship gets instantly cut in half. Both halves of the pyramid float away into space as flowers grow at the incinerated points. The light beam then moves over to the witness's ship, and like the original, the beam tears straight into it right here as trees grow like crazy both inside and out. On the other side, however, the witness sees the ray of light breaking through. It widens its eyes and shocks as the ray of light strikes it head on, making the witness actually flinch in pain, raising its hands to its face as we see this attack clearly did some damage. <laughs> We cut back to the outside POV as the light ray continues firing into the pyramid, and the vanguard watches in awe, until they squint and look a little bit closer. What is that? The witness. While pushing forward against the light attack, the witness waves its hands, and many of the biggest pyramid ships instantly respond and move forward with it. They each surround the traveler, and then this happens. Amanda and the Guardians immediately go into attack. Whatever that thing is, we gotta take it down. But the witness simply turns its head, casually flicks its wrist, and then this happens. Amanda! I'm keeping that. It's too good. The witness reaches out its hand and says, Nowhere left to run. We see a spark form on the traveler as the witness points there, implying that it is carving into the shell. And the witness continues as it says, Your pale heart awaits. Suddenly, the Traveler makes a loud groaning and almost animalistic screeching sound as it sends out small pulses of light that soar rapidly into the system. These small waves of light completely pass by the Witness and it turns its head to follow them, almost amused in expression as it turns back to the Traveler. You cry out for help, the Witness explains. None will come. The Witness continues to wave its hand as it carves a line into the Traveler, starting that triangle pattern it made in the ending. In my revision, it doesn't need to link with the veil or any of that stupid crap that's unexplained. The Witness is here, and what it plans to do with the Traveler, we do not know. 
The Traveler groans metallically again, and suddenly, the scene cuts to Neptune. As still in a cutscene, we go underground. The wave of light that came from the Traveler gently breezes the planet, and we zoom into a lower cavern where a very large, very colorful, amoeba-looking plant responds. As the light touches it, we hear a faint echo of the Traveler's metallic cry. This plant thing, unknown yet to us, immediately lights up. Suddenly, it glows very bright with energy, and it charges up as it then fires a beam of purple light, which soars up out of it out of Neptune's clouds and it heads straight towards the Traveler. This purple beam strikes the Traveler, like in the ending, and a purplish-blue force field instantly forms around it. This field of unknown energy forcibly pushes back both the Witness and the surrounding pyramids. The Witness recoils. It looks down at its hand with surprise, and then it touches this new energy barrier, only for it to sting its hand. The Witness looks back up at the Traveler as it says, Light and dark. So that's where you've hidden it. It is here in Seoul after all. The witness then turns its head and this scene plays. Design. 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 You, you know, know what must be done. done. Ah, they found the veil. We're in no position to engage the enemy. We don't have a choice. We're out of time. Osiris. Enter in your guardian, fully dripped out with whatever you chose to wear and ready to kick some ass. You cling onto the Cabal ship going into hyperdrive, and a nice touch of this OST from the Almighty Mission plays. I love this part and the rest of the opening mission, I find it really awesome, and with the changes I made to the opening cutscene, it's now much clearer for old players and new players alike what just happened. Going off of the information from Rasputin, Osiris realizes that purple light must have come from the Veil, and the Veil gave away its hidden position on Neptune to protect the Traveler. We will find out why, and what it really is, later. This fixes the weird plot hole of the Witness getting a vision and then somehow relaying it to Callus, which is odd. So for the rest of the opening mission, I'm keeping almost all of it. You try to find Osiris as he quickly recaps to old players and new alike on the comms that Rasputin the Warmind died telling us about an artifact of light on Neptune. You progress through the mission, seeing the Typhon Imperator right below you on these asteroids. You run into a Tormentor for the first time. Osiris gets yeeted by a Cabal drop pod, and then you yeet yourself right after him. Next up you land, and I actually quite like the reaction of Ghost to the view you see when landing in Neomuna for the first time. This is... Neptune? There's a whole city here. An entire civilization! I've got a ping on Osiris's coordinates. Let's find him. After you land, you take in the awesome views, and Rohan and Nimbus reach out to you in the comms. Rohan is particularly apprehensive. Who are you? Identify yourself. Ghost explains that we are guardians, looking for our ally in the Vale. Nimbus says, light bearers? Ha! <laughs> What are they doing here? Rohan threatens us when we mention the veil, but Nimbus calms him down over the comms. Nimbus convinces Rohan to give us a chance, and he reluctantly complies. Now as we move forward and fight the Shadow Legion, we see strange purple lights around us, as well as strand cords phasing in and out of reality. Ghost points them out, and the Cloud Striders of course have no idea what we're talking about, thus making Ghost realize maybe us being paracausal allows us to see these things. As we move forward, we approach the spot where the anomaly was in the original, but instead of it just being a straight-up strand tangle in the middle of nowhere, where instead it will be a glowing purple orb. Ghost says in dialogue, that looks like the same energy from that shield protecting the Traveler. At hearing this, Osiris quickly chimes in and says, that must be an anomaly from the Veil, and he beckons you to be quick but cautious, as he thinks the Cabal are closing in on him. So then you approach the humming purple orb, and you hold down your select as it says investigate. The orb changes forms, and then turns into a strand anomaly, at which Ghost is very confused, and thus this section, which is my favorite part of the mission, begins. This energy source, this is incredible. You can wield it. You have a lot of fun with the fast cooldowns using this new ability for the first time, when suddenly your guardian collapses from exhaustion, just like in the original. From there, I would have the next cutscene play out exactly like it does, however, there are a few additions that I would make right before it. So to clarify really quickly what you're about to hear next, I need to explain this. I'm removing the Cloud Arc plotline entirely, and this is why. 
So you mean to tell me citizens of Neo Muna would rather live in a metaverse when they have their own hidden isolated city? A city, by the way, that is often overrun by Vex aliens? What? Here's what will happen instead. The citizens of Neo Muna are running for their lives from the massive ship with Callus's face all over it that crashed into the outer edges of their city. Suddenly, a massive fleet of awoken ships arrive in the atmosphere and swoop down towards the people. One of them lands, and Marasov herself exits as she looks up at the cabal-filled skies and then back down at the confused citizens. Suddenly, Rohan swoops in on his hoverboard and lands between them and Mara as he towers over her and eyes her suspiciously, crossing his arms. Mara quickly explains that she is here to help. Your people require an evacuation. Allow my corsairs to provide it. Rohan stares at her for a few seconds, but then nods, and he helps usher in some families into her ship. As he's assisting the people, noises nearby make Rohan turn his head. He looks up to one of the buildings as he sees another Cloud Strider approaching a surrounded Cabal drop pod. After that, the rest of the cutscene plays out exactly like in the original. I think personally this cutscene is one of the best in this expansion, and it does an excellent job at introducing the two Cloud Striders. And nothing from Nimbus here in this part was cringe, it was actually quite exciting. It was kind of funny to see him introduce himself to the, to the Cabal and fight them. This was good comedy. This was Nimbus written well. We're keeping that. So after they save Osiris, Osiris of course says we need to get to the Veil, but Rohan and Nimbus are not quick to tell him what it is. And then Rohan says this. I understand what's at stake like bearer. Or better than you. Not all of us have lives to spare. I quite like that line. The cutscene ends as Osiris looks behind him and watches the Cabal drop pods falling from the sky, while the entire fleet of Awoken ships takes off into the clouds. Next up plays the cutscene where Callus reveals his full drippy glow up. At last, my semblance matches my inner beauty. And then the witness checks up on him. This scene is pretty much perfect, and I wouldn't change anything about it. I absolutely love it that Callus tries to toast the Tormentor. That is totally something Callus would do. This calls for a toast, does it not? Oh. <laughs> And I know a lot of people make fun of Callus's new drip, especially his helmet, but this is Callus, guys. It is ugly and beautiful at the same time, and it is perfect. This new look suits him and his character perfectly. We're keeping it. Now, however, the original campaign makes a terrible writing error that I'm sure was a mistake behind the scenes. At first, the witness tells Callus it wants the veil destroyed, but then later in the campaign, it tells Callus it wants to establish the link. The campaign never once explains why this is, or what the Link even does. It's all utterly confusing and a complete writing failure. I'm going to fix this. In my renewed version, the Veil is a deeply rooted in lore entity from an ancient time. One the Witness did not know was hidden here in Seoul, thanks to Sabathun concealing its location, as well as Rasputin hiding its whereabouts and the people around it. Now that the Witness is busy holding the Traveler in place, it commands its disciple Callus to go uproot and destroy it, so that the protective paracausal field surrounding the Traveler will be removed. So after that, you meet Nimbus for the first time as this NPC, and he's surprised by your appearance just like in the original. He makes fun of you and then has a little bit of joking dialogue before he gets serious. He points out that there's some weird artifacts back there that the Awoken Queen Lady left for you. After you approach the Hollow Projector, Mara gives you an update that she was able to get the Neo Mooney citizens to Earth safely. And with the help of Devrim K and Mithrax, they have both volunteered to set up refugee camps for them in the EDZ. However, Guardian, Mara says with concern, she tells you the Witness is still holding the Traveler in paralysis above the Earth, and no one is able to get close to it. She says that she has no doubts that it is aware of our endeavors. Shadow Legion have arrived on Earth following us, and we are now facing a war on two fronts. Secure the Veiled Artifact that Rasputin told you about, Guardian, but do not forget your people at home. This will help play into Season of Defiance a lot better as well as give a good justifiable reason why we are doing patrols in an empty urban city. I find the Metaverse Cloud Arc stuff really stupid personally, and this works so much better. As for Jisoo, Quinn, as well as the rest of the citizens giving us patrols, in my rewrite they will be holograms and broadcasts from the EDZ directly into Neomuna, checking up on their home through you the Guardian and the post-campaign. 
This is also logical since both Mithrax and Devrim are refugees themselves, so them coming to the aid of the Neomune people, along with Marasov, is exactly in character, and in the season, I would change it to be where the Neomune citizens are the ones being taken prisoner that we have to free from the Shadow Legion in the battlegrounds. However, the season is written phenomenally, as usual. Let's get back to fixing Lightfall. So then you go on to secure the Veil before Kallus does. Throughout the mission, Osiris tries to get answers from Rohan about the Veiled Artifact, but Rohan refuses. The two are not getting along at all, and Nibis tries to ease the tensions with some lightheartedness and humor. By the end of the mission, instead of Ghost getting possessed and broadcasting to Kallus right in front of us, I will instead end this mission with this. We make our way outside the Veil Containment Building, and in finding it, Strand Anomalies will show up once again, clearly indicating that the Veil is trying to help assist us. We have a fun good time with zero ability recharge times for a bit right as we defend the building when suddenly we get exhausted from using too much strand. However, the invaders are not stopping. In the sky, Callus projects himself and laughs boisterously across the entire horizon. <laughs> Things are not looking good, when suddenly, a familiar voice enters our comms. Guardian, Keitel calls out. You failed to inform me you were apprehending my father on this gas giant. Otherwise, I would have joined you sooner. Keitel, Ghost yells excitedly, as some threshers labeled as Empress Threshers enter into the fight and unleash hell onto the Shadow Legion. What? Rohan yells out. What is this? Cabal fighting Cabal? Allies in arms, Osiris quickly explains. Kaido is our ally, Rohan. She is here to assist us in our fight. More like I am here to save you fools, Kaido sarcastically replies. Your recklessness will be the end of you one day, Guardian. But not today. Well, I'll be, Rohan replies, utterly perplexed. And here I thought things couldn't get any weirder here in Neomuna. Nimbus laughs into the comms excitedly. Man! How cool is that? So then Callus' voice rumbles across the entire sky as he says this. Kite, daughter, traitor, have you come to disappoint me one last time? As we hear Callus say this, Kaido suddenly spawns in right next to us, just like in the holdout scene, and she pounds her chest as she looks at the sky in response. Father, show yourself. Face me. Uh, Nimbus nervously says on the comms, should, should we see ourselves out for this one? With this big change to the second mission, and hopefully some better and not so cringe dialogue from Nimbus, we see a much cooler entrance to our favorite Empress, as well as also establish the fact that how is it the Cloud Striders were so welcome and open to working with Keitel? They weren't around for Season of the Chosen or Season of the Risen. How do they know these relationships? So anyways, we take a stand against the armies of Kallus and push them back in an epic sequence reminiscent of the final mission. However, don't worry, that amazing holdout sequence will still come. Trust. Kallus and his forces retreat, and Kaido and hers secure the Veil and the Veiled Housing. Now with this, instead of the cutscene where Ghost gets possessed, this will play instead. I don't really have any footage to demonstrate this next cutscene I have in mind, so try to imagine it as I explain it. Rohan and Nimbus both hover down and land next to us as they look at Empress Keitel with awe and perplexion. Osiris transmats in, and the Empress grunts as she looks at the two massive Cloud Striders. She comments that she has not read of machine-infused humans in soul. What other secrets does this system hold? To this, Rohan crosses his arms and towers slightly just above her as he passive-aggressively threatens her, claiming he's hesitant about working with warlords in his city, but the enemy? He's not so sure about that at all. Keitel clenches her fists and Osiris jumps between them holding out his hands. Whoa, 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 easy now. Rohan, Empress, we are all on the same side. The Veil may have given away its location, but we all know why we are here. We each have a common enemy. Rohan lifts his head and sighs while Keitel unclenches her fists and growls. The two eye each other coldly, but Osiris helps to mediate between them, while Nimbus and the Guardian stay silent in the back, wisely so. Sighing with relief, Osiris lowers his hands as he takes a step back and looks at the veiled housing. Everyone looks up with him and we see that a faint purple spotlight is continually flowing up into the atmosphere from the top of it, implying that the veil is continually providing paracausal aid to the traveler above Earth. Meanwhile, also acting as a very clear spotlight and target, if you will. We all know what must be done. Osiris continues as he looks at both Kaido and Rohan. The Veiled Artifact is key to all this. If we could secure it before Kallus- The Veil is not an artifact, Osiris, Rohan interrupts. The Veil is so much more than a simple weapon or tool. 
Not an artifact, Osiris scoffs. You take the Warmind's dying words for lies, our people have gone through great lengths to conceal and hide it, Lightbearer. The Veil is essential not only to you in this conflict, understand, but she is essential to us, to our people. We have kept her safe and well until now, until the hour it was needed most, it seems. She jeopardized her location to help your traveler. Are you saying- What I'm saying is, Rohan leans down as his voice deepens in seriousness, the veil is not a trinket to be claimed. She is alive. She is a part of us. Rohan stands up and waves his arms around towards Neomuna, the source behind this city's construction, the roots of our very own powers. He points at himself and taps on his metallic chest as he also points at Nimbus. The veil, Osiris, understand, is Neomuna. Flabbergasted, Osiris looks at the two of them and back at the spotlight. He turns to everyone with a desperate look and says, Well, if we can't secure the veil, then what are we to do about Callus trying to claim it? We kill him. Keitel's voice silences the air as all eyes turn to her. The camera zooms into the Empress as she elaborates and says, My father is a relentless beast of a man. The screen cuts to black dramatically and this inkblot cutscene plays. Don't be fooled by his act. The callous you face is no almighty emperor, but something far more dangerous. You see, I love this part. We are keeping this entire callous lore recap in my rewrite. It's beautifully animated and made, and in particular, we are using the reveal that callous is like a really vicious war beast who will stop at nothing to get what he desires. I'm going to expand on that as I develop callous as a character. Keep this in mind for later. Like a war beast after a blood scent, he chased that chance, abandoning all honor, reason. There was nothing he would not sacrifice for his own salvation. So then after this, we play the mission where we invade the Typhon Imperator. Except this time, since Keitel showed up in the mission before and not in that one, our objective as we go in is to assassinate Callus. We now know that we can't exactly secure the Veil, as in take out the artifact and take it somewhere else like the tower. It's a part of Neomuna. It's a plant. So the mission now is to protect it. And with what Keitel revealed about her father, so long as he is alive, the Veil is very much in danger. And when the witness came to him at last, Callus faced what he had run from all along. If we don't stop him, he'll make sure it's the end for us all. And just like in the original, we face a tormentor, we take out some ships, and we get to the final room only to run into the radial mast instead of Callus. In this scene, Callus projects himself and laughs as he activates the massive machine, and all of our known abilities, both light and dark, immediately get suppressed. Now you will see true power! What could have been yours if only you had accepted my generous offer? Everyone on the comms panics, telling us to get out of there. Kaido immediately sends her forces to help, but we have to hold out for a few minutes until they get there. Callus makes fun of us above and swarms us with hordes of enemies like in the original. However, we discover a strand anomaly from the Veil, and we use it for as long as we can, serving as a logical strand tutorial since the light is being suppressed. Unfortunately, we grow exhausted, and Keitel's forces arrive just in time to clear the way for us as we use our sparrow and get the hell out of there. Callus makes fun of us in the halls as we escape his ship and says, When your light finally falls, may we soon face in a glorious arena. Over the comms, Osiris is frustrated, not understanding why we keep getting exhausted. We failed to assassinate Callus, and now he has light-suppressing technologies. It's clear Strand is our only way to get close to him now. So then next up, we show the scene where Osiris is playing with Strand, and then Nimbus talks to him. Like magnetic poles. You've been busy. Well? For so long, we saw Dark and Light as antagonists. We believed we were the champions of the good because we wielded the light. The two of them talk about the river and the analogy there, and then that gives Osiris some new ideas and perspective on the power. We are the river. And empowered by it, it would seem. You know, I think I know of a place where we can find some of that power. 
Next up, we follow an objective to meet with Osiris in the Hall of Heroes for an important update on his research. When we enter the hall, we are surprised as we see Savala is there in the hall in person, and we enter into a full-blown NPC in-game argument between him, Osiris, and Rohan. As soon as you enter the hall, this is what you hear. Osiris, Savala begins. How can I possibly emphasize the situation enough? Earth is under full and complete assault by the Shadow Legion. Mithrax, Devrim, Marasov, and her entire guard are working tirelessly to protect the refugees in the EDZ. Ikora and her hidden are desperately searching the system for answers, for help, for anything. The Traveler is in complete paralysis under the Witness's thumb. Every last ship that gets anywhere near close to it gets instantly destroyed. And you mean to tell me the only solution we have is a new darkness power the Veil is showing us? We have tried everything, Osiris yells back, waving his arms. We nearly assassinated Callus, but he is using light suppressing tech that nearly killed the Guardian. We cannot use the light or any of our known abilities with his tormentors and the suppression technology. Strand is our only key of getting close to him. We do not have time to be practicing a new power right now. The fate of the Traveler and all we know are on the brink of oblivion. I know that, Savala, but what choice do we have? We need to secure this Veil artifact and bring it somewhere safe, Savala says. You can't remove the Veil, Rohan cuts in. It is not an artifact, Commander. She is alive. She will die if we remove her from this planet. She, Savala says, looking up at him. And since when were you all present here in this system? And where were you in our darkest hours when we needed you? Protecting the Veil, Rohan angrily shouts back. Keeping her safe so she can grow and blossom. Keeping our people safe too so we can one day grow and join the fight. The Veil is a very powerful tree, Commander. Her paracausality can keep your traveler safe for as long as it needs it. It will regather its strength to fight back. We just have to keep her safe until then. And where is your proof to all this? Savala scoffs. She told me, Rohan simply says. At this, both Savala and Osiris throw their hands up and shake their heads scoffing, when suddenly Savala notices you. Guardian, Savala sighs. I'm relieved to see you. We're trying everything we can, Commander, Ghost chimes in. But every time we use Strand, the Guardian collapses with exhaustion. Savala groans as he shakes his head. He turns to the Puka Pond and places his hands behind his back as he speaks. To think the fate of the Traveler rests upon darkness provided by the Veil. Savala sighs and turns back to you as he straightens his posture and looks at you sternly. <sighs> I trust you, Guardian. Remember that. Whatever happens here, always remember the Vanguard has your back. He nods as he looks back at the other two. I need to get back to my people, and to yours as well. He nods at Rohan and Rohan nods back. I entrust this mission to protect the Veil to you, Osiris. We are all counting on you. We will see it done. Osiris states. Savala nods and transmats out. Rohan sighs and then walks back to his station. Then it's just you and Osiris. Guardian, you're here. Good. Time is of the urgence. Strand seems to be our only hope now, infuriating as that may be. Speak to Nimbus. I believe he may have a solution for us. He mentioned something to me about a, a garden, a place, here in Neomuna where the Cloud Striders meditate. He says they feel the veil deeper there. They feel more connected, in tune. Perhaps we can tune into that ourselves. Maybe a more significant anomaly of Strand is there. Go, have haste. See, Bungie, it's not that hard. It's honestly so easy to explain what the veil is. I, I literally wrote this in days. This was so easy. <laughs> Making this video is what's a pain in the ass. Anyways, from there are your objective updates, and you now need to go talk to Nimbus. However, while you're still here in the hall, you can then speak to Rohan with additional dialogue. And in my rewrite, he will clarify to you that the Veil is a plant, an ancient seed of some kind planted by the Traveler on Neptune in the Golden Age. It is the first and only tree of its kind to be perfectly interwoven with both light and darkness paracausality. An experiment, a successful one. He then proceeds to explain that must be how she is showing you Strand, which are anomalies only you and Osiris can see, Lightbearer, while for us Cloud Striders, our connection to her is through the metal we use to infuse our bodies, which is one of the very many provisions she grants to us, Neomuni. For us Striders, Guardian, she gives us dreams and visions. I have been hearing her since you got here. She is desperate, Lightbearer. She relates to you that you both wield light and dark energies. She wants to be protected, to live. She wants to protect her gardener. Please, help her. For me. For, for us. The audio concludes, and you can now proceed to the next mission. Now see, Bungie? It's not that hard. 
why was the veil not explained in the campaign? Now, I don't really care what the veil actually is or what future quests they add in a new season that they will add to all Lightfall owners. I'm sorry, but like Bife has said, too little too late. The reviews have already bombed it. The story is ruined and the first impressions have been completely lost. Now, I am perfectly fine and perfectly okay with an explanation coming in later, but you cannot do this for your stories. Please, you've got to tell a cohesive and understandable story in your expansions. They cannot depend on seasons. Seasons get sunset, expansions do not. Anyways. Now with this reveal, learning Strand is not only just something the campaign gives you as a side quest that seems to be an overfocus, it is now the focus. The Veil needs us to learn this power. She is depending on it. So for this next part, I will fix the unexplained Vexnet phenomenon on Neomuna, as well as also keep the amazing introduction of our boy, Nezarek. What was that? Such a fragile space. This will do. Okay, Nezarek. Nezarek is so cool. He's so cool. So, on your way over to the Cloud Strider meditation place to practice Strand, Ghost gets alarmed as he sees Vex network platforms, something we did not see yet in the campaign up to this point. Is that, is that the Vex network? What is that doing here? Oh yeah, Nimbus replies over the comms. He tells you, yeah, those weird colorful box thingies. Yeah, the Vex have been spawning them in lately. We have no idea why, they're kind of neat to look at though. Nimbus, Osiris replies over the comms. This is no laughing matter. Those are structures directly from the Vex network itself. Your city is being invaded. Guardian, keep searching for strand anomalies, but while you're at it, put a stop to this as fast as you can. Boom, easy. Not only have I made the Strand tutorial portions of the campaign way more essential and interesting, but at the same time I also provided a much needed world building for why the Vexnet is in Neomuna. It's not that hard, Bungie, Jesus. Just add a few more voice lines from your voice actors in the missions, boom, easy, while they're in the recording booths. No one once in the story mentions why the Vexnet is in Neomuna. Not once! Remember guys, these Cloud Striders were not around for Season of the Splicer, nor did they know us, and if they somehow were, this was was also not explained in the narrative. Anyways, after you complete the mission and you play around with Strand some more but yield the same exhausted results, this leads to the next mission, the strike. So after that, Nimbus asks you to go inside the Vex network. You do so, you hear Nezarek for the first time. Because remember, in the raid, the raid story is that the Traveler accidentally revived him in the Witness's Pyramid. I wouldn't change a thing about the raid. I absolutely love the raid. So, with a little bit of clarification to why the Vex are in Neomuna, as well as why Nezarek's in the Vex network, the strike will reveal to us that his consciousness is tapping into the network, and he's using it to influence the Vex to invade Neomuna. A much better explanation, rather than them just being there. I am pain. I am terror. I am Nezarek. Now after this, this cutscene plays. What is this attraction? Sagira, could you run some scans? Oh, right. I find this scene really good, and also quite touching. It was a good little moment to bond between Osiris and Rohan, and with the new context of them at first butting heads, this cutscene will be a nice touch to their story since this is the first time they are getting along. I know I haven't been the easiest guest in your city. Pain is not a hindrance. It simply reminds us we're still breathing. Still fighting. Now, let's get this over with and get to the ending, shall we? So instead of Rohan dying in the next mission in the most cliche death scene I have ever seen, we are unable to take out the radial mast due to growing exhausted from Strand. Rohan swoops in and grabs us, and we barely make it out by the skin of our teeth. Another loss. This isn't good. Our known abilities are now suppressed all across Neomuna since the radial mast has multiple smaller versions placed everywhere, making our light fall in this place and giving Kallus' forces an advantage as well as a lead way to weakening the veil itself. 
it is also being suppressed just alongside us. This calls for a meeting. This scene plays, but in my new version, Rohan is here. Nimbus does not say that cringe-ass line that he says in the beginning, and instead he says this. What are we going to do? We gotta take out this callous guy, but, but how? Osiris says, We aren't ready for callous. We don't even understand this erratic power at a foundational level. And that's when your guardian says this. It's time we figure it out. Keitel, we'll need your troops. Nimbus, charge up as many of the remaining turrets as you can, while Osiris helps me to untangle this strand. Our guardian takes the lead and this awesome training sequence begins, including Rohan, of course. When we think about controlling something powerful, It's easy to assume it takes strength. I love this sequence. I love 80s action sequence montages. This is so good. And now with my new context, now we know that Strand is actually essential to the story because of the radio mast technologies. It is key to winning this conflict. So now this Karate Kid, this Rocky Balboa training sequence actually matters and you feel that. But what I've learned is that we cannot control every facet of nature. Instead of tightening our grip, we must open our palms. And as it goes on, instead of Nimbus holding the core of Rohan, it's him and Rohan together setting up the turrets, and then they fist bump. So after this, Osiris sends us into that Vex network mission to test us, and we finally master Strand. I really love that Osiris gets excited in this mission, and during this he figures out that all it was was a change of perspective and flowing with the river instead of fighting it, thanks to Nimbus's passing of that wisdom. After this, we get back to the radial mast. We now can wield Strand without growing exhausted, so we do so and we destroy it. After that, everyone cheers, we get out, and then this scene plays. My witness, there have been complications. You hold the universe in your grasp, and all you can think of to do with it is... Secure the veil. We will create the link. Infinite apologies. The veil is yours. It will be dark. My god, that moment was incredible. Imagine what Callus saw. <laughs> Now for the finale, Callus did not take that meeting well. And while half of Keitel's forces are still retreating, Keitel broadcasts us with an alarming message that her father is sending everything he has to the Vale containment building. The animalistic side of Callus is coming out, and he is getting serious. Everyone rushes in, and Osiris tells us it's finally time to use the power we have finally mastered. And then we go to the awesome holdout sequence. Remember your training. You only have one goal, keep them from the veil. This mission was amazing. Gameplay wise, music wise, this entire sequence, phenomenal. We're totally keeping this in. And don't even get me started with Keitel's introduction. Shadow Legion cowards, this is Empress Keitel, the true sovereign of the Cabal. You've chosen to ally yourself with a gutless traitor worshipping a false god. We are Cabal. We eat the mountains. We drink the seas. If you have any shred of honor left, then at least give us the pleasure of a worthy battle. This part, I loved it. And then the nice touch of the tormentors having Nezarek's name on them. Nice. So after this, it ends the same way. Callus shows up in the sky in a projection. He blasts a hole into the veil containment anyways, and we are all knocked to the ground. While we are knocked down, numerous of his troops rush into the breaches that he made. Rohan panics on the comms, and then he flies straight down there, straight into the breaches on a surfboard while he orders Nimbus to stay outside. 
On the comms, Rohan desperately cries out that we need to get to the Vale. She's been breached. Go, Keitel demands us as she readies her hammer for a fight. I'll hold him off for as long as I can. We descend right after Rohan and we see the amazing sight ourselves, as Rohan is also in awe by the beautiful looking veil. There she is, Rohan says. As we descend, Keitel warns us that her father completely overran her, and he's coming. Then this happens. I'm reading major shockwaves in the vault. The Emperor is smashing through that place. Hurry, Guardian. He'll get there before you. I absolutely love this part, the fact that Callus just straight up bulldozers his way down into there. It's so funny to me. We reach the bottom, and here's the changes that I would make. Rohan is there, and he tells us, get in there, quick, you're the only one who can stop him. And as we go in, we see that Callus, instead of just sitting there like a blundering idiot staring up at the veil, he's loading a massive looking cannon. The same one he uses in the fight. All around him in the arena are the light suppressing technology devices which are being used in this arena to suppress both us and the veil. Now Rohan comments on our way down that these things are opening up a weak spot to the veil on the underbelly. And as he says this he says that we need to stop Callus and we need to stop him now before he shoots her. Keep this in mind for later. Also, along with that, this will make a justifiable reason for why you must use Strand in this mission. The fact that people can cheese this fight by using a well under the stairs. Are you kidding me? How anticlimactic. Bruh. In this fight, you are required to use Strand. But Exula, what do you mean? That's good. That's so hard. Yes. Yes, it is. This is Callus, our boy himself. This fight is supposed to be hard, and I stand by that. So then you go up to the anomaly that the veil provides for you, you unlock Strand, and then you rally to your flag, you approach Callus while he's still loading the weapon, and then this happens. I've been waiting for this day a long time, Guardian. Come, let us revel in this exquisite moment. Now that we are here, Callus is excited to see us, and he fires this massive veil killing darkness weapon at us as he laughs and taunts. He can easily shoot the veil anytime, but this is Callus. Of course he would have fun like this. It's something Callus would do. <laughs> the fight goes exactly like the original as we lower his health bar and he's just having a blast acting as a behemoth trying to take us out. Once we lower him all the way down, Callus falls over and seemingly dies. Now this is where I make some massive changes to this fight. Instead of going into phase two immediately, we go instead to a cutscene. Callus lies dying, quote-unquote, dying, keep that in mind, on the floor just like Sabathun at the end of her fight. He struggles to grab the massive cannon, and we slowly approach him, holding whatever primary weapon we used in the fight. Rohan enters the arena on his hoverboard, and then floats up, and checks on the radio mass light suppressing devices, and then checks on some of the tendrils of the veil. He sighs in relief that she's okay, and then he gives us a thumbs up, and we do the same back to him. Callus looks at us on the floor and he begins to distract us with a blubbering speech. He banters on saying we could have had it all. He promises riches and greatness and treasures saying that we could have had it if only we would have stood by his side yada 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 yada. Picture how Savathun monologued right in her death scene for a reference. However, as our guardian closes in, their weapons are stowed and their hands are lit up green, implying that they are about to finish him off with Strand. Callus sees this and we zoom in on his face as the music intensifies. While he's still distracting us, his eye cuts over quickly to Rohan, and the camera shows the strider's back is turned as he's gently touching one of the Vale's tendrils. Callus turns back to us, smiles, and he ends this distractive talk with a sinister final sentence out of nowhere, as he slowly grabs the cannon. In the end, I will always be remembered as the one who completed it! Suddenly, Callus stands up out of nowhere, the cannon in hands. Rohan turns around and widens his eyes. The Guardian sprints forward, but it's too late. Callus roars in a loud battle cry as he charges up the cannon for a visually supercharged round. And as suddenly as he stood back up, he aims it straight up at the veil, 
and a massive shell soars straight into the exposed underbelly and explodes into a darkness explosion. Rohan screams in horror and he soars on his board straight towards Callus. Our guardian throws a grapple that latches onto Callus' chest. Callus staggers only briefly, and as the guardian soars forward and charges up a grapple melee attack, Callus throws his cannon to the side, clenches his right fist, and punches us straight in the face. We go soaring back as our guardian crashes into a crate. Rohan screams as he soars towards Callus, and his fists augment into blades. However, like an animal, Callus catches Rohan by the throat with his left hand, and the music intensifies as we zoom in to a sinister, animalistic face, reflecting that of Keitel's cutscene from earlier. He holds up Rohan for a minute, laughing, as just above them both the veil pulsates wildly. The tendrils drop down rapidly from it like in phase 2 of the fight when Kallus shot it, trapping everyone inside the arena within its branches. Nimbus and Osiris show up in the oversight room that we were in on the way here, and Nimbus cries out in horror as he looks through the tendrils and he sees Kallus holding his mentor by the throat. Callus looks at Rohan choking his grasp, smiles, and he clenches his fist as Rohan's neck snaps. Nimbus screams as Callus then hurls Rohan straight onto the ground. He raises up both his fists into the air and he slams them down as the camera cuts away, making a horrifying cracking sound that we do not see. The music ramps up intensely and our guardian gets back up. We look up and see a shaking veil pulsating in clear pain as its tendrils have now trapped us in here with Callus. Callus laughs, reaches for his back, and he pulls out two massive gladiator blades as he charges at you laughing like a ravaging animal phase two begins boom you thought we were done huh hell no Callus just shot the veil with a brutal heavy shot of a darkness weapon designed to do exactly that. Rohan was straight up mutilated in the middle of the arena Mortal Kombat style, and we are trapped in here for round two as a dying and bleeding out veil is pulsating like mad crazy just above us, and Rohan's body is right there in the middle of the arena. Shit just got real. Phase 2 plays out exactly like it does in the original, except like I'm playing right now, I would play some terrifying music, such as Honorophobia for this scene. As Callus is charging at you like an absolute animal. He's not taunting you anymore, he's not mocking you, he's just roaring like a beast fulfilling what Keitel foreshadowed earlier. Eventually you take him out and you kill Callus in this claustrophobic and scary as hell sequence, and this time instead of falling over and pretending to die, Callus just straight up explodes into darkness tendrils just like Rolk and the caretaker, and as he's dying he looks up and reaches out towards the veil and simply cries out, WITNESS! NOW YOU WILL SEE ME! And the music concludes, Callus dies for real this time, and the screen cuts to black. The final cutscene does not play out like it did in the original. The final cutscene begins as our guardian looks up. The veil is groaning, she's pulsating, she's bleeding, and then all of a sudden, she just cries as the pulsating colors slowly fade into darkness. The tendrils go limp, they shrink, and then they wither and crack. The room darkens dramatically and we cut to outside the Veil containment building as the purple spotlight that was shining into the sky fizzles and dims out. Back to below the Veil, the tendrils that trapped you in the arena thin out and wither as Nimbus and Osiris and Keitel immediately run inside. Nimbus screams out in horror and he runs and falls to his knees before Rohan's mutilated body that we do not see. Osiris looks up at the veil, fear and dread filling his eyes as he repeatedly says, No! 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 Kaido looks at him, at Nimbus, and then us, and then she walks right past us as she looks at her father. With clear pain in her eyes and a bit of shakiness in her arms, Kaido falls to her knees, drops her hammer, and says nothing. No jokes, no fist bumps in an inappropriate moment, no Kavavstav out of nowhere. Only a silent, 
and devastating cutscene. Our Guardian looks around at all of this when Savala's voice suddenly cries out in the comms. Guardian! Savala's voice is frantic as the Guardian touches their ear. Osiris! Empress! What happened? The barrier around the Traveler is gone! The witness is closing in! What happened? Does anyone read me? There is very clear panic in Savala on the other end, and Keitel cuts him off with just three simple words. We just lost. The camera zooms out, and we see Nimbus crying with his hands to his face over Rohan, Osiris leaning over a nearby rail, shoulders sunk in defeat, the Guardian stands paralyzed just below a dimming veil, and the Empress remains kneeling, unmoving. We zoom out slowly, and the screen cuts to black. Now you tell me, which ending cutscene do you prefer? Well, the uglier they are, the harder they fall, right? Bruh. Next up is the final cutscene, which will play out exactly like it did. Now personally, I'm not a fan of the ending. I find the witness's vague and unrevealing speech about anything as it carves out a triangle portal on the Traveler to be incredibly vague and confusing. However, this is why I need to keep it. The rules of my rewrite is to work with what we have instead of a complete story overhaul, and as of writing this script, we still have no idea how this new skybox, this portal that the witness went into, what this means, or what it means for the future. So if you're watching this during the final shape, you got the reveal then, but as for those of us right now, we have no idea where the witness went, and we don't know what this means. Though an unanswerable question remains on all our minds. Where has the witness gone? We must begin our search in the pieces it has left behind. It will not succeed for as long as we remain in existence. So for the sake of the future seasons and whatever this leads to in the future so that I don't contradict them, I have to keep it in. As you can tell, however, the context of how we got here is completely changed with my version. I hope that with my ending, you don't walk away with a feeling of, that's it? Or asking yourself, why did our guardian pull out Kavavstav? But rather, I hope that you leave this scene feeling like, holy crap. Callus just straight up murdered Rohan, and the witness just opened a portal on the Traveler. I hope that this doesn't leave you with a meh feeling like the original does, but rather it leaves you with dread and like we truly just lost. Now, imagine your favorite YouTuber reacting to my Rohan death instead of their confused reactions to seeing our guardian pulling out Kavavstav. Kavavstav, by the way, a common primary. Kinetic. How is that supposed to kill a ghost? Writers, what the hell? <laughs> Golden Gun would have made more sense, but I don't think even that can kill a ghost. Anyways, oh my, you have no idea how irritating that scene is to me. No, that's why I took it all out. Now to finish all of this, I will be fixing the atrocious dialogue from Ikora and Savala that finishes the campaign. First of all, Bungie. Why on earth do Savala and Ikora say the Traveler is gone when it's literally chilling there right above the earth in a skybox that we can see in the helm? What? Here's what I will have Savala and Ikora say instead. Guardian. Savala sighs as he delivers his most defeated speech yet. He will tell you that he doesn't know what this means, that he's never been more afraid for the future, and we cannot enter the doorway the witness made. Every attempt has repealed our ships. Savala looks at you and shakes his head. Continue the fight, Guardian, like always. He then talks about our allies and our real trust being found in our new camaraderies. That of Mara, of the Awoken, Mithrax, Devrim, Keitel, the Cloud Striders, and all our allies alike across the system. They are where our true strength lies. He concludes his defeated speech by raising his chin up and saying, Eyes up, Guardian. It's all we can do now. You then approach Ikora and she too sounds completely depressed. Ikora quickly explains that she and her hidden cannot figure out what the portal the witness created is, or why it's still there, or where the witness went, but its presence is haunting, and the traveler is unresponsive and unmoving. She shakes her head as she looks down. I don't know what any of this means, Guardian. I don't know if the traveler is gone, if it's paralyzed, I haven't been this afraid since, since the Red War. Guardian, I, I don't know what to do. 
And that's it. That's all Ikora would say. In a time where things have never looked more grim, it is completely inappropriate to have our vanguard be giving bright speeches, especially after an ending like the one that I just presented for you guys. Bife said it, everyone's saying it. We want to see Ikora and Savala both tell us they are scared. We want to hear it in their voices that they are full of uncertainty and dread. Conclude the campaign with that, a defeat. So let's make it feel like one.